the angular velocity through the transformation system, right? Just example the propeller step and through the real axle. Yeah, and that's why wheel actually rotates. Now, actually, in propeller step, the real axle is joined uh, by some uh, uh, universal joint. Yeah, it is, it is like the universal joint. And this torque and uh, speed is regulated by the clutch by using the gearbox mechanism. So when actually at uh, low gear or, or, um, or the low gears, yeah, say first gear or second gear, this is torque is high and angular velocity is actually low. Whereas in the high gear mode, yeah, the angular velocity is uh, high and torque is low. So angular velocity is inversely proportional torque. Now, if you see the bacterial power test system, it is composed to a reversible motor. It rotates in clockwise and anticlockwise direction. And a motor sub stepped, buried into the reversible motor, and this actually uh, connected with the propeller shaft. Now, if you see the structure, rigorous structure, you can see the rod actually, rod actually acting as a motor step. And it uh, joined with the uh, propeller shaft through a hook. It is actually, uh, it is acting as a joint. Now, if you compare this two systems, you can see in the bacterial power tension system, there is no clutch. So now question comes, does the PFM produce same angular velocity and torque in the CCW and CW rotational mode? Before going to discussion about the, uh, going to the rigorous discussion, I am little bit discussing about the torque generation mechanism. Say, in this previous structure, you can see this is actually the protein. Yeah, torque generation is the torque generation unit. And if you see the structure, the motor, the outer surface of the motor, there is some a C terminal domain is composed with C terminal domain of FLIG protein. It is called FLIGC, which makes contact with the stator complex. And stator may remains in two conformations without proton and with proton. So this is the two conformations. Yeah. So uh, actually here we uh, represent this uh, protein is a two piston like that. So in the with one proton, the right piston is contact with the uh, with the uh, motor, the FLIGC protein, and it makes a power stroke. And then when it goes, the proton goes from stator to cytoplasm, the another conformation, the depth piston comes. Actually, this model is usually given by Kojima et al. And then it's, this uh, model is nicely explained by Zig et al. in his PNS paper. And these two power strokes, actually creates the torque and which helps to rotate the motor. Now, actually, how to measure the torque and speed? This is actually the torque and speed you can measure through the bit as a technique. In this case, a peripticus bacteria, all the flagellum of the peripticus bacteria, first cut except one, and it's the remaining flagellum is truncated and one bead is attached to the truncated filament. And then actually, a weak uh, the, um, angular velocity of the bead is measured, measured to the weak optical frame. The motor track is calculated through this equation, where zeta m and zeta l is the rotational drag coefficient of the motor and float. Now, if you see, if you vary the bead size, omega m, and tau will actually vary. Now, if you plot the top speed, the, in this way, you can uh, establish the top speed relationship for two rotational modes. So, this is the top speed relationship for CCW rotational mode of GFM, and this is for the CW rotational mode. Now, CCW rotational mode, top speed relationship method, method without in absence of the CHYP protein. What is the CHYP? This is the phosphor regulator protein, which binds to the lower part of the motor and it changes the direction, rotational direction. Now, if you see, this is the high, uh, this is B is the medium and C is the low viscous load region. So now you can see 
that in the top speed relation, in the 60W top speed curve, if you see that top speed, uh, uh, torque is almost constant up to a uh, intermediate speed value, which is a mean speed, after which it falls up in zero. But for CW rotational mode, it, it linearly decreases. Yeah, so there is uh, some asymmetry is present in the top speed relationship. Now, if you also observe that at low speed, torque is high. However, I, at high speed, torque is low. Then you can see that in this case also, this relation is obeyed, which is generally observed in the automobile system and which is regulated due to the action of the gearbox mechanism. Now, questions come that without a clutch or gearbox system, how does a system follow this relation? Then you also see that in this case, see, in this case, the torque uh, for CW rotation is higher than the CW rotation. So you can see that some biophysical process actually modulating the this torque tau m. Yeah. So which the biophysical process is, and another is the power of an engine is estimated in terms of the omega and tau. And in this case also, power for CW rotation is higher and the CW rotation. Why are BFM exhibit such type of behavior? Now, we first try to uh, finding, find out the biophysical process, which actually modulate the tau m. First of all, actually, torque speed relationship is directly related to the torque generation mechanism. So maybe due to binding of the CHEYP protein in the uh, motor, maybe stator-rotor interaction is changed, and that's why this asymmetry comes. It is expected, yeah. But actually, this notion rejected by the recent structure of studies. Say, this is the FLIGC protein. So if you see in the CW rotational mode, it is in just in the left-hand side. And in, when it changes uh, the rotational direction, it becomes just reverse. And it infers that the stator-rotor interaction just reverses during rotational switching. Now, if you consider the stator-rotor interaction potential, just we consider the asymmetric intended sort of potential. Yeah. And we consider this potential following the work of Zing et al. from its PNS paper. So we actually, you can reproduce the top speed relationship for CCW rotational mode. Now, according following the structural studies, you can establish the top speed relation for CW mode if you consider the just mirror image potential. But in this case, we observe that it gives the symmetric uh, top speed relationship. This is the symmetric relationship. Now, next, actually, we uh, that is the parameter of the potentials. Yeah, so main parameter is the height, that we have is the height of this bump region, and this is the length of the uh, 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 this bump region, L bump. And if you vary, then you see that linear top speed relations never obtain from this variation of the potential. So we can infer that asymmetric does not uh, depend fully on the block generation mechanism. So what is the biological process that actually modulating the top speed asymmetric top speed relation? Now, if you clearly observe the work of saying it, I am briefly describing. In this case, actually they model, uh, they propose a model that a load is connected with the rotor to a soft elastic linkage. Okay. And this linkage actually is a soft spring. So now, actually, the square T B is proportional to if you can express in this way. Now, if you see the graph, that without uh, with, with spring, it shows that top speed clear, which is expected for the CCW external mode of the motor. But without actually uh, spring, it becomes almost linear. So from that figure, we can expect that maybe flagellum plays some role in the asymmetric top speed relationship. Now, actually, recent study states that in the in vitro beta experiment, the hook switches its conformation from bait to straight, which is generally observed in the bulk of condition. Okay, so similar on this situation is observed in the in vitro beta experiment. And also, it is observed that 
who transform due to rotational switching, who transform from flexible to rigid one. And this is due to the rod protein. This is the rod protein actually inserted at the position of the hook. And that's why the soft and flexible hook becomes rigid. And by observing this result, we are actually considering that tau m is modulated by the conformational dynamics of hook. And we propose a mechanistic model that in the CCW rotational mode, hook becomes straight and rigid, whereas in the CW rotational mode, it becomes soft and bent, and it meets an angle size with the motor rotational actually direction, which is present here the unit paper in cap. Now, additional observation is that that in this uh, in this experiment is of the revolution as well as spinning motion is observed. Earlier, only the evolution motion was used. So you can explain these two types of motion to the rigid body theory. Suppose who behaves as a top divider, and the and as a who behaves as a top divider, then tau is the you know, core produces by that stator interaction can be divided into tau k and tau n. The tau k is the responsible for the spinning motion, and tau n is responsible for the revolution motion. And this revolution motion is exactly similar uh, to the stop dynamics. Now, from rigid body motion, you can write in this way. However, the problem comes because who is flexible. So, how we calculate tau k and tau n? Because rigid body theorem we can apply. Now, we see in this case. This is actually bent, okay? And this is, it makes the conical shape directory. And bead actually, you can see the truncated filament rotated along the peripheral surface of the conical surface. Yeah. And bead actually rotating at the uh, periphery of the sphere in this place. Now actually, drag force, actually hydrodynamic drag acting on the Bead, and it makes a delayed movement. Now, if it's the, actually the position, rigid body motion, position of the bead, if actually it uh, uh, rotate rigidly. However, motor will try to rotate with a similar speed. That's why a restoring torque will develop. And this can be, if we analysis the torque, then you can see that the, the, this restoring torque direction is equivalent to the tau direction. So you can write in this way, but kappa H is, is the bending stiffness of the hook. Similarly, for the torsional motion, a spinning motion, you can write in this way, where the, the restoring force acting along K, and which can be expressed in the kappa H speed, the torsional stiffness of the um, torsional stiffness with uh, theta m minus theta and the angular position of the motor and bead in the spinning motion. Now, actually, you can construct the equation of motor. So, this is actually we are considering all the torques acting along the in uh, rotational axis of the motor. So, this is torque coming from the back, this is torque coming from the stator rotor interaction, this is torque from revolution motion, spinning motion, as well as boundary torque. Now, equation of bead for revolution motion. You can write in this way as well as spinning motion. This equation is that. Now we can calculate the average uh, motor torque in this way. This is a similar form which actually experimentally is used. However, in our case, we, when we consider both motion, you can express this a bit rotational um, drag coefficient of the bead in that form. Now, actually, how to estimate in this case, actually, how to estimate tau pressure. We actually estimate tau SR by using the diffusion to switching type torque generation mechanism, which actually used by seeing SR later in its PNS paper. In this case, this is a two potential. Say this is the V1 and this is V2. Say this is the position of the rotor or motor. First is you say when it switches if the minimum of the potential it switches from one potential to another, again it diffuses and again uh, it uh, jumps in the next potential. So this is V2, this is V1, again it is V2. So this is, and during this transition, power stop occurs. So here, V2 and V1 is related, which just gives to this equation. And rate constant, this jump rate constant, you can express in this way, where ion motive delta mu is the ion motive force, and the rate constant 
is expressed in such a way so that delta g you can write in minus two pm. Now, how to? Is it about about three more minutes? Oh, oh sorry, and uh, oh, sorry. So also we are calculating estimated psi and kappa h by following the work of Riley et al. But here they estimate kappa h actually for the exchange plane. Bending of hook in the HJ plane, and we incorporate their results in the heat type of equation. The problem is that here bending in the revolution plane is the XY plane. So we prove that HX is equal to HXY by using the equation of deflection and moment curvature correlation. Then, and also we can, yeah, estimate KSP by using this equation used by the fly laser. Now, if you see, if you see that top. Relation, we can nicely reproduce the clock speed relation. When psi equal to 85 degree and the bending stiffness is almost 10, 100 kVT like that, then we can reproduce the uh, CCW clock speed relation. However, when psi almost 0 0.7 degree and is almost kappa h equal to uh, almost uh, 100 times more, then we can get the linear clock speed relation. So we infer that asymmetric terms from the conformational changes of the hook due to rotational switching. Now we plot uh, that we finding out the inmate mechanism. So this is we plot tau a n hat and tau k n hat. We observe that uh, this tau is uh, is uh, in the revolution motion. Tau is at uh, uh, tau m n hat actually exactly the same. So we can say the revolution motion guides the shape of the top speed curve. Whereas in the uh, spinning motion, tau k, uh, in the CW motion, tau k actually, tau k in actually uh, spinning motion guides the shape of the top speed curve. So we infer that who actually in this case, who behaves as a clutch. Now, from our actually theory, there is two motion. This is actually uh, this is the revolution and spinning motion. Then in the in the locomotion of the bacteria, so uh, in the run motion, so it is expected bacteria so the revolution motion as waves. But in this case, so we can consider the two flagellated system. These two torque actually nullify each other. Then question comes: How bacteria move forward? So apparently it seems that oh no our theory is wrong, but not. If you consider the universal joint behavior of hook, then you can explain it. What is the universal joint? Universal joint actually transfers the hook from one direction to another. Yeah, and it is this um, motion. So, but however, in tumble mode, hook loses the universal joint behavior due to rigidity as well as lack of the necessity. And in BDC experiment, who behaves as a top divider. Now I am summarizing our work that in this model, we consider that the rotational switching of a BFM uh, actually transform from rotational mode, modulate the hook conformation from flexible to rigid by changing side, painting angle. And psi induces two motion, revolution and spin motion. And uh, these two motion, the restoring torques developed in this two motion govern the top speed pressure. Only by tuning one single parameter, you can fit the, you can actually reproduce the top speed pressure, asymmetric top speed pressure. And the study reveals that CCW rotation, the revolution motion predominates and govern the top speed curve, whereas in the CW rotation, spinning motion actually uh, decided the shape of the linear top speed pressure. The conclusion is that. Asymmetry comes from the conformation of changes of two due to rotational switching. In PFM dynamic, hydrodynamic resting torques regulate tau f, thus good behaves as the clutch or air box, the bacterial power system. In bacterial locomotion, only spinning motion is observed due to uh, actually as good behaves as the universal joint. And in run mode, a bacterium move forward, maybe due to that reason. Bacteria BFM show the more power, and which is reflected in the top speed relationship. Now, I am thanks to the co author, Professor Jin Kwasi, also Professor Hauke, and Professor Ajit K. Sarma in IIT Jung, and also I acknowledge my institute, Peking University. I thanks to Kenbai, Hunchian, and also Atlas. Thank you.
Okay, thank you very much for that great talk. Give your Zoom applause. Um, there's a, we do have time for a couple of questions, one or two questions. There's a question in, in the chat um, from Nurse Figueroa. What do you think would happen if the hook is externally forced to stay in, this, in the same position, let's say in run configuration of 90 degrees? Yeah, I do not follow. Yeah. Uh, the, the question is, what do you think would happen if the hook was forced to stay in the same position? Force, uh, what? So if it were just enforced that the hook couldn't change um, its its position. So for instance, if it, if it were in the configuration of 90 degrees and it could not move, what do you think would happen? Uh, so actually, uh, no. Actually, hook, uh, I do not know uh, this type of force because actually hook fails due to elastohydrodynamic instability. Yeah, so hook automatically fails. So what type of force? I is it an, any mechanical force? Nurse, if you'd like to clarify, feel free. Yeah, if you could externally constrain the flagella so that the hook cannot possibly, for example, uh, become straight to do, to do tumbles. If we were very, very constrained by the environment, it could not bend. So what would happen to, to the torque in that case? Yeah, of oh, but now I understand. So if you actually, uh, then it will always so, I think from my side, it, uh, it's a linear top speed relationship you can obtain. Yeah. Top top speed relationship definitely be the linear. Because it will definitely it will be linear. Because in this case, say if it is rigid, so if you restrict the bending of the hook, so then actually it will uh, spinning motion, it will only show the spinning motion. And spinning motion actually govern the shape of the top speed curve. So that's why it will be linear. So say you can see the curve. I am one. Yeah. Say this is the torque for revolution motion. And this is the restoring torque from the spinning motion. When spinning motion is observed, the spinning motion actually due to rigidity of the hood. Okay. So now, if if you if you actually uh, restrict the bending of the hood, okay, so it becomes straight. Say it only so the spinning motion. Then actually you can only see the linear top speed regression. You never get that, and only the spinning motion is observed, not revolution. Because you are rest, you you make the restriction of bending. If filament, if the hoop bends, then only two motion arise. Okay, and due to bending, these two revolution and spin, and then they compete with each other. But when actually you restrict the hoop, you restrict hoop, so then only one motion is possible. This is spinning motion, and it is observed in the say in the tumble. In the in bacterial locomotion, in the tumble mode, only spinning motion is observed, not uh, any revolution type motion. And in this case, hook also not creates as a universal joint; it becomes rigid. So, which I actually said in the next slide, in this is in tumble mode, hook loses the universal joint behavior. In tumble mode, means hook becomes straight; it can't bend; it becomes rigid. So if, if you apply force to restrict the bending, actually uh, bend, bend of the hoop, then all the spinning motion is observed. 